All right, and welcome to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. This time around, we're going to be taking a look at our friend over here, the Dofer A117 Digital Noise Source and 808 Source. Um, we're going to be talking about some of the basics this time around and then going into a quick demonstration of a few things. Um, there's not very much to talk about, actually, uh, this time around. We have about four different ports here, uh, but they are broken up into two sections, so let's just jump right in and start talking about these things. Uh, the top section is going to give you digital noise. Um, all the way at the slowest rate, it's going to give you some random clicks, um, actually series of pulse or square waves coming out here from the digital random noise uh, clock port right there at the top. Immediately below that, we have an external clock uh, port that you can patch an LFO or a clock from somewhere else, uh, like a sequencer or something like that, like we have right up here um, at the top, with A154, we have a clock coming out from here. So I could take this clock and then patch it down in the bottom section into the external clock port here, and I could control the series of random clicks. Now it is somewhat uh, unpredictable in that the clicks will sort of go off at uh, intervals, but they will at least be synced with the clock that you would be feeding it in. Uh, we'll hear a little bit later on uh, what that is actually going to sound like. Um, but as it says here at the top, uh, it's digital noise, which is very different from uh, analog noise, which we've kind of heard in the past in one of our demos. So why don't we just take a listen and hear what that sounds like. Let's listen to uh, analog noise first. Uh, we'll just listen to some white noise. Here we go. Here's uh, some white noise for you. Okay, so that's white noise. Uh, let's take a listen to some digital noise. Patch that in here, and then into the same input. Okay, now this is at the at a very slow rate happening right here. Uh, so if I bring this up, the higher I go, the more it sounds like what you're accustomed to as far as uh, noise sounding like water or rain or like uh, wind, something like that. So that is our digital random noise right there. And just so we get uh, a full sort of demo of this, let's go all the way down to the slowest rate. That's about the halfway mark right there. And then all the way at the bottom, this is going to be at the slowest rate. You can start to hear some of the clicks and random clicks that we were talking about a little bit earlier that can come out of this. So this can be used as a noise source that you could feed into your filter, um, or uh, as an alternative, you can use it as a CV source. Fairly interesting. So let's go up to our uh, sequencer and take a look at what's going on up here. We have our A154 feeding the A155. As you can see, a very consistent clock going from left to right. So pretty good. Now let's turn off the clock. There we go. So no movement over here at the A155. And let's go down to the bottom, and we're going to take our clock from here, and we're going to go right into the A155 clock port. So let's go up to the A155 and patch it into our clock. Now what we want to do is kind of keep an eye on the, the lights here, because that is actually going to tell us what's going on with the clock. So as you can see, at the slowest rate over here, I look at my A117 um, and compare that to the A155, you can see that it's going at a very fast pace. See, compared to what we had before. I'm going to switch temporarily over to the A154. Here we go. So you can see the lights are considerably going much slower. Let's flip back over there. So this is from our digital uh, noise source, if you take a look at these lights. You can also see that it's not going very consistently. It's kind of going and speeding up and going and speeding up and it's going and speeding up. Uh, if I bring the rate higher, 
or in the low number direction, you can see that it starts to become more rapid in its movement. It is still random to, ex to an extent because the pulses are not fixed. Sometimes they, they fire and sometimes they don't. So you actually have a very fast, but at a certain point, it's going to be indistinguishable. It's, it's going to look, at least from the lights anyway, it's going to look almost like one constant tone. And then eventually it just gets to this point. So, other use for the A117 digital noise source. CV applications. Let's go down to our A117 and take a look at the dial again, because let's talk about what we're actually hearing. Um, I'm going to patch my digital noise in there again, because uh, it took me a little bit of playing around after reading the manual to kind of get um, that the slowest rate was over here and the fastest rate was over here into the noise. But once I plugged it in and started listening to it, I'm going to patch into input two. Um, it's fairly straightforward. It's just the numbers are are reversed. So at the 10 mark, we have the slowest rate where you can hear audible clicks from the noise source. And it says in the manual that when you get to the highest rate, that it becomes a noise source, which is what we heard a little bit earlier. So there you have the noise source. So this is actually the highest rate when you get all the way down to zero, right there. So, just wanted to point that out. So I'm gonna unpatch that. It's sort of to, uh, it's sort of similar to the convention of the A188, if you're familiar with that. How um, at the maximum uh, side, uh, your clock is actually at the fastest, and therefore you don't really hear as much of the effect. But as you pull it back to the lower marks, then you start to hear more of an echo effect. Uh, it's similar to that, uh, just that the numbers are reversed. So, by that little discussion, that kind of explains the basics of the top section. And now let's talk about the bottom section, because it's uh, very interesting in its own right as well. Um, these two are actually uh, supposed to emulate the sound that was used in the Roland 808 and 606 uh, drum machines to create uh, cymbals and cowbells, uh, that kind of sound. Um, the two oscillator mix, which is coming out of the bottom, is going to be what you would use to make a cowbell sound. And then the top can be used for cymbals or hi-hats. So there you go. Let's take a listen to what these sound like and how they sound a little bit different. So let's listen to the two oscillator mix first, because I happen to be close to that. And I'm just going to patch that into my mixer. Here we go. So it's kind of a, just a continuous tone right there. There we are. Oop, didn't have that plugged in all the way. All right. Now let's unpatch that. And let's take a listen to the six oscillator mix. Catching into six oscillator mix, and let's listen to that. It's a little bit thicker, kind of a little lower in tone, but kind of a long sustained kind of tone. Okay. So pretty straightforward. Um, so from the brief description of what we've gone through, uh, you know, talking about noise and those little random clicks that you can hear, and the fact that these two here at the bottom are actually uh, intended to emulate the source of, a, uh, of an 808 or a 606 drum source, uh, you can see that this is going to be fairly interesting for percussion sounds. So I thought we'd jump into a couple of demonstrations of how you can use these for percussion sounds. Um, we're going to start by just doing a simple hi-hat with the six oscillator mix. And uh, for this, I'm going to need a few cables. So I'm just going to start by doing the cowbell. Let's just do a cowbell here first. Actually, I wanted to do the six, but let's just start with the two. So I'm going to patch into the two oscillator mix, and I'm going to take that out to my exponential VCA. 
into my audio input right there. And then I'm gonna take my audio output from my A131 and I'm gonna patch it over into my mixer, input two. Here we are, there we go. Uh, we're not hearing anything yet because uh, I'm not shaping the sound in any way. I'm gonna use this envelope immediately to the left of it to do that, but I need to trigger it in some way. So I'm gonna go back up to my A155 and I'm gonna use the triggers coming out from here because they just happen to be over here, uh, fairly lonely. So I'm gonna switch my uh, sequencer back on or my sequencer clock, I should say. And I'm gonna take the triggers out from, let's see, let's do trigger number one. And then I'm gonna patch them if I go down into the gate input of my envelope and you can see it firing there a little bit. And then I'm gonna take another patch cable and go from my envelope over into my VCA and I should get a little bit of sound. So there's my cowbell. Now, I do have some settings written down here for what I classified as a cowbell. Now, there's plenty of iterations of this, but I had it in my uh, A140 in the medium setting, and then I had my attack set to zero. I had my decay set to about a one, at least as a starting point. My sustain was at about 1.25. Right about there. And then my release was set to about one. Yeah, I think I had to play with the decay a little bit to get it to be a little more plucky. And to me, that sounds like a pretty good cowbell. So there we are, cowbell. Now let's take a listen to, um, or just add to that, uh, the hi-hat sound. So we're going to take the six oscillator mix for that right here and we're just going to patch that into our vectoral low-pass gate over here and we're going to switch it over into VCA mode. There we go. Patch it right in there and you should be able to figure out where I'm going if you've seen some of my videos before. So if we go up to our A155 again I'm going to take the triggers from trigger three and I'm going to patch right into my envelope sitting to the left of my A101-2. And then I'm going to get another cable. Let's see, I need a short cable. Well, let me just use one of these. Should be fine. Take my envelope out. Patch it into my A101-2. There we go. We should be getting a little bit of signal coming in there. Let me turn this up a little bit. And now I just have to patch out from there. So let me get another cable. There we are. And this should be our hi-hat coming in. Okay, so that's my hi-hat. And now for my hi-hat, I had a slightly different uh, set of settings here. So I have my envelope in medium mode again. And then I have my attack set to zero. My decay set to about 0.5. Okay, and then my sustain was at about a one. There we go. So if I turn my cowbell down, Oh, I'm sorry, that's actually my hi-hat. Let me turn my cowbell down. Here we go. Let's listen to the hi-hat. There we go. And then I can tweak this a little bit. So maybe bring the sustain down a little bit. And get more, a little bit of a... Yeah, I kind of like that as a hi-hat. There we go. So my sustain, decay, fairly short. So that's my hi-hat sound. And I can bring my cowbell in. Okay, so now if I go up to my A155, remember my triggers one up here are going down into my cowbell. So if I switch these,
And then the trigger three row is actually doing my hi-hat, so change that. And I'm just kind of freely uh, changing those sounds there. But that's kind of the idea uh, of how you can create kind of two quick little percussion sounds and uh, get a nice little envelope here to shape that sound going into a VCA, uh, either A131 or A101-2, or really any other VCA that you might have at your disposal. I think they also make a, a, a dual VCA. Um, and uh, yeah, that'll get you going for percussion sounds. So it's going to actually wrap up the first section of the A117 Digital Noise 808 Source demonstration. Um, hang out a little while for the next demonstration, because in the next one, what we'll be looking at is a little demonstration of something that they call in the manual uh, pitched noise, where we feed a VCO into the external clock input of our A117, and we get something called playable noise. Uh, so uh, please stay tuned for that, and uh, we'll see you shortly.